Okay, so I get a lot of questions about uh, security systems, the factory security systems on these vehicles, and the alarm events that occur within them. Um, it happens on older Tauruses, older Escapes, it seems, and what'll happen is that the, uh, the alarm will just go off randomly for no reason at all. And basically, what's happening is is one of the the door jar switches is going off for wiring reasons, corrosion reasons, whatever the reason is. Usually, isn't an actual theft issue. Um, so what I'll show you is what we have with the scan tool is a, a great little tool on there. What the module that watches all this does is it records the alarm events up to I think five, maybe even eight on some of the newer vehicles. So it'll tell you what the last five alarm, what's, what, what, what's the reason the last five, eight uh, alarm events were caused by. So once you go in there and they say rear latch every time, you obviously know it's probably the rear latch. If it's multiple doors, different times, different days, then you probably know someone opened the door without uh, unarming the car. So I'll show you how that looks on the scan tool right now. Okay, so we got the key on and the IDS plugged into the vehicle. So we can go into data logger. Okay, and then body, security, and uh, perimeter. And that'll give us all the PIDs for that module that have anything to do with perimeter alarm. Key in status, door jar, all that stuff. So you can see up here all the alarm events. And this is all the recorded alarm events that happened on the vehicle. And then, of course, you can monitor in real time each one of the door latches uh, to see if you can try to duplicate it if the alarm events don't tell you anything. So we'll see what it says on here. Okay, so like I said, by the time you get to the point where you bust a scan tool out like this and you start looking at stuff like this, you're going to have a bunch of events recorded already. You see them all on here? It's pretty obvious it's the passenger door that's that's opening by itself. Well, the, the, the door jar switch has the problem in all reality from corrosion or wiring issues. Um, every time, every alarm event that has been triggered in the past has been by that door. And that helps you narrow it down a lot. I mean, it's, it's instead of sitting there guessing and catching it, you just go into there, you check for that, that recorded history like that, and you know which door to concentrate on. Then you go into finding, is it the latch, the door jar switch, is it the, the wiring running through the, the A pillar here, uh, and the convolute there, uh, is it the module wiring, whatever. You're always concentrating on the circuit that goes to that particular door and makes it narrow down to one door instead of basically five on this particular vehicle. So that's how we find them and it makes it very, very simple and really accurate way to do it. Now the easy trick to see if it's a um, you know, a door jar switch that is, is sticking because it's rusted up or just worn out or it's a wiring problem is to simply use rust penetrator, MP50, WD-40, whatever you want to do and you spray it into the latch area, open and close the door a couple of times and we can watch in real time on our scan tool if that door jar switch is actually working properly now. It's that simple. Once you know that, this is a short term fix and you should really change the latch, but you definitely isolate it to the latch itself and not a wiring issue. So there's a few steps involved, but it's all pretty easy stuff as long as you have the proper tools. So let me get this thing open. And you simply, you go to the, the latch area here and you spray it down in there. At first I like to use uh, some kind of rust penetrant. And then I might use uh, MP50 or WD-40, whatever. So you can see it right here. Passenger door jar switch right there in the middle. So we're going to try to open and close this a couple times and see if it starts working on there. Okay, now if the, the lubrication trick doesn't work, the rust pen trick doesn't work, you know, WD-40, nothing works, what you're going to do is pull off the door panel at this point and start looking at the latch itself. Um, what you gotta do is pull the connector off of there. Usually the door jar switch is, is separate and you just take that off, there's two wires, you jumper it, no problem. On this one, uh, it's one big old connector on here for um, the actuator, door jar, everything's all built into here uh, on the Ford Escape. So what you need to do is find, there's gonna be a common ground 
that all, everything on here uses, and then there's going to be a signal, a ground signal path back to the gem module uh, to let it know that there's there the doors closed or open on there. Now, when when it gets the ground, the ground goes through. That means the doors closed. He loses it, it's open. So um, I'll show you how we do this on here. So on here you can see. Okay, you should be able to see. Right here is our common ground that the key status and everything like that uses on here, okay? And then there's a, a dedicated output to tell the module if it's if it's open or closed on here. So um, we're gonna jump from the black and white to the dark blue. And when you do that, and all of a sudden it works immediately, you take it out, in, in, out, and it responds quick and, and perfect every time. Right there, it tells you that it, it's it's the, um, the door jar switch within the latch, and not the wiring going to the module. And that's 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 uh, that's usually the case. Um, so I'll show you how it looks on here. Get a little help from my helper here. So you go over to your connector right here, and you look for the dark blue wire, which is only one that's even remotely blue. So we found that, and luckily, the the black with white stripe is right next to it. So we found our two wires, now we just need to jumper them and that will loop the ground through like the door's closed. So it's these two right here. And you can listen for the chime in the car. Come together. Take it out. And you keep testing it over and over again like that. And you can see the modules responding every time. Okay, you can see right here in the scan so we can watch it in real time also. So you'll see it's a jar right now because the connector is disconnected and we got an open circuit. And then we're going to jumper it and close that circuit with our paper clip here. And you'll see it go to closed in a jar, closed in a jar back and forth. And it'll respond just as fast as you put it in there. So you're putting it in there now. You can see it's closed on there. I pull it out a little bit and that's when the chime goes off in the vehicle. So you can see, you can test this without even having the scan tool just by listening to that chime in the vehicle. Every time like that. So that's about it. I just want to show you guys that neat little trick uh, to diagnosing these. It, it, you do need the wiring diagrams to do a lot of this stuff, but once you do get the wiring diagrams, you follow videos like this. You guys can diagnose this stuff very simply yourself. Um, there's not a lot of interior wiring problems in the Fords. Um, so even the A-pillar uh, uh, wiring problems aren't that common. There's some different years on Explorers, stuff like that, but definitely not on Escapes. So I knew it was the door latch, uh, door jar switch inside the door latch here. I just had to verify so the guy's not you know, spending money on unnecessary parts. So uh, we got diagnosed.